Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa wageni. Uh, I am Rosemary. I don't want to assume that the express service is all DCIK members. So I am Rosemary Wajiro Wakamau. I know you didn't know Wanjiro. I know you don't even know Kamau. Do you know Kamau? Yes. I will ask Mr. Kamau to stand wherever he is so that you will see Mr. Kamau. Thank you. Yes, that is the, the young man that we've been living together for the last, almost close now, going to 29 years. And you can imagine uh, being in, in the house, one house with one person for all those years. It's wonderful. First, I want to thank God for giving me this chance just to come and share with you the word of God. And I also want to thank God for our bishop and our mom, Alice, for allowing me just to come and share the word of God. You know, the servants of God allowing another person to come and share, it takes the heart of God. I also want to thank the pastoral team, even for praying with me and also believing in me. You know, sometimes we may, you may be asked to come and share the word of God or preach. And Bishop may agree, yes, but he doesn't know what I have. He doesn't know whether I'll be able to deliver. The same case applies to our pastor, Miri Saint. So when, we, when I'm saying that I'm, I'm thanking God for them, and I'm thanking God for, you know, giving them a time to allow another person to come and share the pulpit, I don't take this for granted. Bwana Sifiwe. Yes, I'm glad that this morning, the Lord has been so faithful. I feel a bit charged this morning. And why am I feeling charged? Because I'm very flesh. And if you look at me, hey, I don't know. Wala wanajua, wananijua. Mi nasikia nikona nanguvu. I'm really revived. For the last one week, I had gone to DOF. And I want to tell you it was fire. You know fire? So if you look at me, you may think here yeah, I'm very flat. But I'm very expectant. I'm very expectant. Here, very expectant. And I want to deliver. Soon and very soon I'm going to deliver. Because when I was there, I got stuff, good stuff. The Lord spoke to me, and I was, I was given another name. Oh, I chose another name. We were told, choose another name. I'm called Blessed Favored Rosemary. I have another name. I'm blessed. I'm favored. It is because of the favor of God that I can stand here and talk of the goodness of the Lord. I can stand here and tell you, the Lord loves you. The Lord has favored you. Can you imagine such a morning? It was raining. It was raining. For example, where I have come from this morning, those who don't know, are about 30 kilometers away from here, or 35. And it is raining. Actually, when we were coming, my husband had to stop somewhere, and even when we were driving, take a photo of our estate, because it's like... We, are, we said it is called, we are going to call it Lake Emmanuel because our estate is called Emmanuel. It has rained. And I can imagine also in Zimmerman, it's the same. But you are here. Why are you here this morning? And imagine there are no gifts that are given to the express service to come early, Mr. Macharia. Are there gifts? Nzuki. There are no gifts. But you come here because you are hungry. You want to be fed. You want to hear from the Lord. And I want to tell you, this morning, you are going to get that which you have come to get. Amen. Maybe some of us you are expecting. I don't know which preacher you are expecting. But this morning, it's Rosemary. Imagine. It's Rosemary. This is the year of threshing. The mountain. Isaiah 41, for verse 15. Let's that scripture be projected in NLT. 
And when I was in the DOF, our mom, Pastor Alice, told us, you will keep on hearing the word, and it will be repeated, and it will be repeated. And even when it is repeated, now that is the time again it is sinks. From January, we've been talking about this scripture. And we keep on talk, talking about it until the end of the year. Verse 15. You will be a new threshing instrument with many sharp teeth. You will tear your enemies apart, making chaff of mountains. I want to get the next your enemies apart. Imagine, you will tear your enemies apart. And today, I won't talk about the enemies. We are crushing the mountain. But I want to talk about the enemy. God will deal with our enemies. If you want to give a topic of my, of my message, God will deal with our enemies. That means enemies are going to be there. And that's why that scripture was written. In the book of Exodus, chapter 14. I'll read verse 5 first. And I want to read this together. Our Bishop JB always tells us, make use of your school fees. Yes. Let's read together, verse 5. When... They asked, what have we done? Just hold it there. When the word reached, who? The king of Egypt. If you look at the previous verses, it talks about the Israelites. When the Israelites were leaving Egypt. And then in verse 5, he said, that message reached that the Israelites have already left. So Pharaoh and his officials, they changed their mind. What have we done? We have let the the Israelites to go, the slaves to go. He was like, when did the slaves, you know, leave? Why should they leave? And he changed his mind. Remember all through Pharaoh's heart, during the plagues, the ten plagues, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And the Bible says even God himself hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And this time, when already the, the, the slaves, they have started now going, he realized, hey, to me fanya nini. And after that, he had to tell the soldiers, his officials, now we have to follow them. Verse 12 to 14. 12 to 14. Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? They said, leave us alone. Let us, let us be slaves. Can you imagine? These are the Israelites. Let us be slaves to, be the, to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. 13. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The, Egypt, the Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. 14, the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. The Lord is going to deal with your enemy. Here, the Israelites are on their way to Canaan land. And who is the enemy? Who is following them? Pharaoh, the Egyptians. They are the enemy. Today, there are so many Egyptians following us. The moment you got saved, the enemy realized, Hiya, what has, why did I release this person? And what is, does the, the enemy do? He has started following you. He decides now I'm going to follow you. Then when you are there, you're asking yourself, and by the way, now here we are, Moses. I think the best thing would have died there. And they started grabbing. And one of the mountains that we are going to thresh this mountain is that the, the spirit or the mountain of grabbing, grabbing or murmuring or complaining. 
That is a mountain that the enemy wants to use to put us down, to crush us down. But this morning, I want to encourage you and tell you that this mountain will have to be defeated. This mountain of grabbing, because they complained. And you know what? Grabbing and murmuring is contagious. I don't know whether you know that. It is contagious. If my sister, professor, if he starts talking to our brother, telling him, ah, you know, you can see the way this carpet is. Imagine it is not, the ashes did not wipe. He said, yeah, imagine. Then he tells Phyllis. Then Phyllis says, yes, and actually I can smell. There is a, a stink, a very, yeah. Then Phyllis said, passes it to Florence. Like that, like that. Murmuring is contagious. Complaining is contagious. The Israelites, they started complaining. And everybody was complaining to Moses. But Moses told them, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And when they stood still, what did Moses do? Moses, imagine, didn't join them. He didn't join them in complaining. He actually cried and prayed. That's what the Bible says. He cried and prayed to the Lord. Meaning that the whatever was going on in that camp, when all of them were complaining, Moses was there to tell them, God is going to make a way. And they were looking. How is he going to make a way? In front of them, there was the Red Sea. And you know, the Israelites, when they were in Egypt, they were not taught how to swim. So they could not swim. They could not swim. When they looked back, there was the big army of the Israelites. But the Lord told Moses, just tell them to stand still, not to complain. And they stood still. And when Moses raised his hand and the staff, there was such a dry land that they were able to pass. And as they were passing, I can imagine the Israelites, the children, you know the young children, like the boys, they would, I would imagine they'd want to touch the water, this wall, you know, a wall of water. And it is not flowing. But they had a lot of faith also with Moses that they could pass through. And as they were passing through, when they reached to the other side, they sang. They praised the Lord. Because the enemy which was following them was crushed. So the enemy who is following you today is going to be crushed. You will sing, you will rejoice. But as you rejoice, don't forget. Don't forget that one time you are a slave, but now you are free. And as you sing and as you praise, don't forget the enemy is still following you. The Israelites, that was not the end of them. They continued with their journey. For about three weeks, they were in the wilderness. They had carried some water in their bags. They had carried some bread from Egypt. And they ate they drank the water, and the children drank the water. And as they were going, the children started saying, Mom, I'm hungry. Mom, I'm thirsty. So everybody was thirsty. I don't know whether you people, you know what it means to be thirsty. Ask me. Ask my, Mr. Kamau what it means to be thirsty when you are in the wilderness. I've been in the wilderness. He came from the wilderness last night. Last night, he's a few hours, and I think tonight again, he's going to the wilderness again. And it is tough. When you are thirsty, you just need water. And you don't take water when you are in Trokana or in Masabit because you want it. You just take water because the body needs it. So this time, the children of Israel, they were so thirsty that they had no water. In chapter 15, chapter 15, they went... And as they were complaining, they had no water. Verse 22 says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shea. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. For three days, not after margin, three days. 23. Now, when they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called 
Mara. And the people complained against Moses. Here again, they are still complaining, saying, what shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. I want to mark that. The Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the water, the waters were made sweet. Therefore, he made a statue and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them. 26. And he said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, you are God, and do what is right in his sight. Give ear to his commandments and keep all your statues. I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have, br uh, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Uh, uh, just first take 27 now. Away. I'm going to ask for it later. Now, here we are seeing the children of Israel. We said they sang and they rejoiced that now they are free. They have crossed the Red Sea and they could dance. And you know, Miriam took the tablin and she danced. Now again, they are here. They have found what? The water. And you know, the first people who found the water, the children. The way they like exploring. So they were there. They were, because they were asking, mom, where can we get water? And they found the water. And when they found the water, everybody came and they were ready to scoop the water and take. And they took. And as they were taking, they all started, yeah, ouch! It is bitter. It is bitter. Again, Moses, look at the water that you are giving us. You are com they started again grabbing. They started again complaining. I told you, it is, it is contagious. So they started again talking. They started talking about Moses. But remember, our God heals. And God healed the waters. He used what? A tree. So a tree is very important in the desert, if you didn't know that. A tree. Here we don't, we don't care about trees. We go cutting them anyhow. Go to Trokana, just, just try to cut a tree. And that tree is either a school under the tree. It's either a school or a church. And most of the churches we have in Trokana, they are under trees. So a tree in the wilderness is very important. So this tree, they had seen it, but they had, they had not recognized about it. So what did God do? God made sure that there will be the water would be bitter so that the Israelites could learn to appreciate the tree. The same case applies to us. Do we appreciate the tree? I'm not talking about the physical tree. Jesus Christ was hung on the cross using what? Wood, tree. So the tree here, it is a beautiful picture of the cross of Jesus Christ. And he shed his blood, what we have just taken this morning, a symbol, to remind us of how good he is. We need to appreciate the cross of Jesus Christ because Jesus was hanged there. The Israelites, they had also to appreciate this very tree. And in our lives, we have many, many, many experiences, bitter experiences, like the Israelites. When they got the water, that was a bitter experience. And when we are talking about the bitter experience, you know very well, there are things in your life that you feel they are pushing you so hard that you don't know how to make them sweet. But I want to tell you, Jesus is here to make that bitter experience sweet. And the tree, remember, was cut down so that the blood of Jesus on the cross can wash us and can make sure that we are sweet. First uh, Peter uh, chapter 2 verse 24 
1 Peter chapter 2 talks about who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Meaning this morning, if you are sick, the Bible is saying you were healed. Not you are going to be healed today. Tired you You only need to, let, to tell God, thank you for healing me. Thank you because of giving a solution. There is always a solution when God comes. God answers prayers. Even when things are not working the way we want. When the children of Israel were murmuring, were grumbling, they, they were even blaming God for bringing them in the wilderness. And they forgot that Moses had told them, that God told him to bring them, to take them to Canaan. But their faith was still down. They could not remember that. But I want to say this morning, one of the things that is happening in our lives, when we are talking about the bitter experiences, they don't just come. I want to say this. Number one, God allows waters or allows waters or allowed the waters of Mara to be bitter so that you and I, we may learn to appreciate that tree that made the water sweet so that we can appreciate Jesus on the cross. Number two, when you and I have the bitter experiences, we need to take them where? To Calvary. We need to take them to Calvary. And at Calvary, they are going to be made sweet. And you know what? God allows some of these bitter experiences or disappointing experiences in our lives so that we can learn to allow him to sweeten our disappointment. And I know this morning you may say, yes, I feel disappointed. I feel bitter. Why? Because I have lost my job. Or because maybe I have lost a friendship. I've lost a loved one. You feel like you are so, you may feel bitter. But I want to tell you, God settled your case before. Imagine before the children of Israel reached Mara, the tree was already there. It was not planted when they reached there. It was already there before. So God knows you are tomorrow. So before any problem starts, God has already promised a solution. He has already promised a solution before. Psalms 90 Psalms 90 verse 2. What does it say? Psalm 90 verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, all ever you had formed the earth and the world, even the lasting, the everlasting to everlasting you are God. So even before the mountains were formed, God knew. So God knows because he's the one who formed and that's why we are saying when the Israelites were at Mara, that tree was there before. So your case, the Lord knew beforehand. He settled your case beforehand. And you know what? Goliath, when David went to kill Goliath, the stones that he took from the river, they were not brought that time. They were there before. So for, it was only for David to take the, the stone and throw it and kill Goliath or Goliath. So the same case applies even in our cases. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, the Lord knew you. And the Lord knew even, I think of um, the case of Samson. When Samson went to fight the Philistines, when the Philistines came, he used a jawbone. The donkey was not killed that time. <laughs> it was already killed before. So he got the, the jawbone. Meaning, God knew 
Samson will use the jawbone to kill the Philistines. And the Bible says that he killed even many, many, many more people than he had killed before. So the, the jawbone was there waiting for Samson to go and pick. The verse I said I'll come to, verse 27. Let's go back to verse 27. It says, Then they came to Elim, where there were 12 wells of water, and 70 palm trees, so they camped there by the waters. Now, I've said the Lord knew before. Now the Israelites, after the bitter waters, the sweet waters, now the Lord takes them to a place where there were 12 wells, springs, for every tribe. So this time there was no fighting. Every tribe, they had to get, this was for Manasseh's tribe, this one was for Dan, this was for Naphtali. There was no commotion. They were not to fight again for the, the water. What else was there? 70 palm trees, meaning they had enough food to eat while they were there. So the Lord knows that well that he's going to give you this morning. You're not going to fight with anyone to get it. You are not going to complain because you'll have enough water to drink. So every tribe, hmm? the Bible says at Elim, they rested. There was a rest. The Lord is taking us to rest. Now when I'm talking about rest, I'm not talking of resting of living this world. No. Rest. Meaning that now you are comfortable. You have now the water enough for your family. You have food enough for your family. So you are not going to grumble again. Because that mountain will be crushed. The mountain of complaining will be crushed. And then our Lord has made for us or has given us a beautiful, beautiful place for us. Why? Because imagine the Lord. The Lord sees. He sees your future. Imagine Mungu anakuwa na macho. Unajua when we say the Lord sees, unashangaa anakuwa na macho. Yes, the Lord has sees. He sees. So he can see your future. What else does the Lord have? He has ears. He hears our prayers. And then, what does he do also? He also answers them. Not just hearing. He answers our prayers. So when you are low, when you are facing the bitter experiences of Mara, you will find that the Lord will answer your prayers. He hears your cry. He will answer every prayer this morning, the one that you may be praying and asking the Lord because our God is faithful. And the bitter experiences that the Israelites experienced, those disappointments, the Lord himself will fight for you. He will crush those experiences and he will make sure you learn to trust the Lord. When we put our trust in the Lord, just like the way Moses did. Moses cried to the Lord. He prayed to the Lord. He never complained. Let's let God help each one of us not to have the spirit of complaining. But let's have the spirit of thanking God. Just thank God. I was a slave. But now I'm not a slave. I am free. The enemy will not stop to follow you. We said the enemy, or God is dealing with the enemy. He dealt with the Egyptians because those were enemies that were following. The enemy of the bitter waters, the Lord dealt with it. And he was able to give the Israelites the beautiful water, the sweet waters. He's going to make our experiences Sweet. And this morning, as I finish, you may be here and you are feeling like 
Rosemary, even as you're speaking, I am, feel my heart is so low because of what I'm going through. I just want to give you a chance just to tell God about it. Let's all stand up. Let's all stand up. The bitter experiences we go through, you, the only one who knows you know that experience. And I want this morning you surrender it to the Lord. When you just surrender it to the Lord, what will he do? He will take that. And we'll, we'll sing this chorus as you present uh, that need to the Lord. I surrender to the Lord. It's a hymn, but we'll only sing the chorus, I will surrender. Because I want to surrender all our needs to the Lord. You don't even need anyone to pray for you. You only need to tell God. This is my bitter experiences. This is the enemy. You are the one who knows you are Red Sea. You know you are Egyptians. That is the one that is following you. Surrender all to Him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust in, in His presence daily. One more time, all to Jesus. your name our father we want to surrender all to you Jesus our father and our God with you we with you in our lives our father we know we can make it but without you Jehovah God we know we cannot make it therefore this morning we want to surrender our disappointments to you dear Lord we want to to surrender dear father our bitter waters to you in the name of Jesus we want to surrender dear father even our red seas to you king of glory our father and our God we know when you come in our lives our father you bring change you bring transformation and this morning dear father we are standing before your presence our father oh God you such as our hearts oh God my father may you continue to to search our hearts. May you forgive us the many times we have complained our father. The many times our father we have 
troubled, oh God. That many times, our Father, we have not trusted in you, oh God. May you forgive us, our Father. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, take over this morning. Continue, dear Father, to do us good, Jehovah God, even as we continue waiting upon you, Jesus. Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for meeting our needs this morning, dear Father. Thank you for healing us, our God. Thank you for healing our broken hearts, oh God. Thank you, dear Father, for touching us again in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, we want to say thank you. We give you glory and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.